Ja, hallo, Michael Adams von der PDEC 2017. Ich bin hier, wie eigentlich jedes Jahr, ähm, bei Explore Resources. Äh, der Chris DuPont ist bei mir. Ähm, es gibt äh, ein paar interessante Entwicklungen und da wollte ich jetzt ein Update von ihm bekommen. Chris, thanks for taking the time again to talk to me. Um, as everybody knows, that we did a couple of video interviews that I will link around this video. Um, you have the, the huge flagship project in Timmins, the Timmins Porcupine West. Um, you can give us an update there, you have a joint venture partner, but the, the main part is I would like to get a little bit more information about the other projects. But give us an update about uh, the situation at Timmins Porcupine West first. Okay, our Timmins Porcupine West project is advancing quite nicely with our joint venture partners. They're doing all the work and we're just sitting back riding along, basically. Um, on that project, it's 2,000 meters of strike length. There's a synclinal structure and our model says there's a potential for 20 to 30 million ounces of gold. To date, we have over a million ounces that we've found. And Tech, for instance, has done a whole pile of work considering the, uh, studying the geology. They've also done, reviewed all the samples, and they've done extensive downhole geophysics as well as surface airborne air, by helicopter geophysics on the property. Okay, and all what they found, does that still support your thesis, which I remember that it's kind of the uh, Hollinger, Hollinger McIntyre model? Yes, it does. It still supports the model, because the Hollinger McIntyre model said there was a synclinal type structure. We have the synclinal type structure, as evident by the geophysics. We have the porphyry, and the porphyry is the heat engine. The heat engine caused the fracturing in the rocks around it, and these are structural traps, whereas the gold came from the porcupine dust store fault and was in place on the splay faults into these structural traps. No, and as you indicated, right, all the all the work right now is done by the uh, joint venture partner. So this gives you some more time to focus on on your various other projects. So give us an overview and and considering the flagship project, yeah, what are the merits of some of the other projects you have? Well, what we've done, we've concentrated on our project in Ogden, our Ogden Gold project. We acquired last year. We've done some drilling. We've done enough to test the geology. We found out that we have the right kind of geology. We have a porphyry in the area. We also have some gold. So we drilled uh, six holes that were spaced about one kilometer apart. And on two of the holes, we hit gold. Two grams per ton over a few meters, which is very, very interesting because one, it tells us we're in the right environment, two, the right geology, and we have gold. So that was confirmation. The next step is to go in there and do more detailed geophysics and more drilling. So that's what we plan in the future, to do go into that area and do that kind of work. Another project that we concentrated on is our Kid Creek project. Right. On that one, just north of the mine, we have a claim. And on this claim, we found that there was some potential for base metal deposits. In fact, the potential, we've hit exhalite there, and we hit up to 1.5% zinc in the exhalite. Typically, the exhalite, if you look that up on the internet or use a Google search, you'll find the exhalite is the crust on top of a base metal deposit. Any major base metal deposits in, in the world have exhalite there. And we have that. Now, that's the first time we hit exhalite in our 10 years of exploring in the Kid Creek area. Okay. Another claim we acquired there has the same geophysical signature of around 1964 when they discovered the Kid mine itself. Now, that one was held privately by a private family, and we just acquired it from the estate about six months ago. And on that particular ground, we're drilling there too. And there we've hit the right kind of geology, so we know that we're close to the vent. Okay. Um, and you have, uh, besides the, the projects you just mentioned, you have uh, various other projects, but your, your focus right now is the um, Abitibi Greenstone Belt. Is that, can you say that? Yeah, yes. Well, the focus is in the Abitibi Greenstone Belt because the Abitibi in itself is 800 kilometers long, 300 kilometers wide, has produced over 180 million ounces of gold and over 450 million tons of copper zinc ore. So we know it's a very rich environment for gold exploration. For the Germans that are not so familiar, um, the Atabiti stretches th through Ontario and Quebec. The Abitibi Greenstone Belt goes across the border of Ontario and Quebec. So 33% of the Abitibi is in Ontario and about 66% is in Quebec. Okay. So that's why we have a lot of projects in Quebec as well as in Ontario. Right. So we have 14 of our projects are located in the Abitibi 
Greenstone Belt in Ontario and Quebec. Okay, and let's talk about um, the long-term plan. So are there any plans to go for one of the projects or more to go into production? Or is your plan to develop it and no. kind of the same, like the, the you did, like find a joint venture partner? No, my plan is not to develop any projects. Our plan is to bring the project to the point where a major is interested in it. Okay. And then we'll talk to the major and strike a deal that will be beneficial to the shareholders. And the major will take the ball and run with it. That's the plan. No, and that's actually that that's a good plan and it's always good to rely on the expertise of the of the majors, right? But having said that, you have a very good exploration team too. So give us some more insight about the exploration team the geos you are working yeah. with. Well our exploration team is excellent. Like we've got uh, one of our geologists has over 30 years of experience, 30, 40 years of experience. Another one has over 40 years of experience. Our geologist in uh, Ontario in the Abitibi, his expert, he's worked in the Abitibi for over 30 or 40 years basically. So he has the expertise, the gold expertise, to understand the core and the rock. Now in, on, in New Brunswick, our geologist there has over 40 years and one of the premier experts on base metals and sulfide deposits in New Brunswick. Now in New Brunswick, which you have to look at, they had the Brunswick mining and smelting and that produced over 130 million tons of base metal ore. Ernest Brooks, which is our senior geologist in New Brunswick, has worked in New Brunswick for over 40 years. So he's been connected with a lot of the major deposits in New Brunswick. Okay. So to sum up, yeah, for the rest of 2017 and beyond, I think the investor can expect some really good news release, some good developments. And um, yeah, how do you feel about acquiring more projects somewhere in Canada? No, I, I wouldn't acquire any other projects anyplace else in Canada. Like we're going to stick with uh, gold and base metals okay. and nickel and we're going to concentrate in the Abitibi Greenstone Belt okay. in Ontario and Quebec and also the base metals in New Brunswick. Okay. So we're going to keep there and we're going to try and if we acquire anything it'll be additions to the properties we already own and they'll be in the shadow of the head frame of an existing mine. Which makes sense because you know what you have, right? Yeah. So, okay, great update. Thank you very much, Chris. Like always. Also, ich werde Sie weiter auch über die Explore, über die äh, Entwicklungen auf dem Laufenden halten. Ja, ich ähm, denke, man hat da wirklich äh, sowohl ein sehr gutes Team, aber natürlich auch äh, sehr gutes Projektportfolio. Man hat bewiesen, auch in der Vergangenheit, dass man sich mit Majors äh, ins Bett legen kann. Ja, man hat ein äh, Joint Venture auf dem Flaggschiff-Projekt ähm, und wie der Chris gerade auch angedeutet hat, auch für die anderen Projekte, die man in Kanada hat, hauptsächlich im äh, ABTB Greenstone. Belt, ähm, dass man dort die bis zum gewissen Punkt ähm, vorantreibt und dann dort auch äh, nach einem Major sucht, der entweder das Projekt übernimmt oder mit dem man dann zusammen die Projekte weiterentwickeln kann. Das war es von Explore Resources, Chris Dupont, Michael Adams von der PDEC 2017 in Toronto. Vielen Dank.